so I'm a PhD student at University of Southern California, and uh, I'm very excited to discuss our work here uh, on constructing these large-scale data sets that, are, uh, with, that can help with misinformation detection. So as uh, the previous presenter said that uh, misinformation is not just a problem that is restricted to COVID-19 pandemic related misinformation or vaccines, but also elections and many other uh, social political issues like climate change and so on. So a lot of the problems of uh, the current misinformation is due to the proliferation of bots conspiracy groups, as well as coordinated operations that are trying to increase the promotion of these false and misleading information. So uh, here, I think the main focus of our work is to address two significant challenges that are more uh, more obvious in the current scenarios uh, that have happened in the last few years. The first thing is that misinformation is again, not just restricted to false claims, but also misleading claims, which are harder to detect. And secondly, that because of the proliferation of malicious actors, detecting these in a timely and scalable manner for new and evolving domains becomes really challenging. So here we address these two challenges by looking at what are the two basic techniques in which people have tried to identify misinformation related to these social issues. So uh, the primary approach is to do claim-based verification where fact checkers are constantly looking at social media posts and trying to journalistically verify the facts that are reported in those posts. And that is an extremely human intensive and time consuming process. The other approach that fact checkers take is a simpler approach of just looking at news sources or websites that are publishing these contents and looking at whether they are reliable or unreliable. However, if we just look at the website, we can't be sure about the veracity of the news articles or the uh, like individual articles or the social media posts because the social media can have a different comment with respect to the article. It could be calling out something that's false in the article. So it's not a blanket approach to, or an easy approach to detecting misinformation on social media platforms based on the news source credibility. So in our work, we wanted to see whether we could instead propose a different approach to alleviate the problem of having these, uh, having the lack of data sets in new domains by using these news source labels as initial or weak labels. So, Based on that assumption, we first wanted to verify whether these news credibility labels are well correlated with the claim-based labels. So based on a small subset of social media posts related to the COVID-19 vaccines, we inspected the news source labels, which were reliable, unreliable, or conspiracy, and the ground truth claim-based labels that were obtained through Snopes and AP News and other official organizations. And in our case, I, the hypothesis that these new source labels can act as good initial or weak labels to construct a robust data set uh, is good because they can capture a more diverse range of, uh, even if we have, like with a few new sources, we can collect a large diverse set of claims that uh, could contain misinformation or false or, or misleading uh, claims. So, First, we had to, uh, to be able to capture these different types of distortion. We first looked at, uh, we inspected tweets as well as the uh, categorization that was available by these fact-checking experts. And we came up with the seven uh, categories listed here, which we think are general enough uh, to be applicable to any do new domain, but also uh, nuanced enough to capture the different levels of distortion that can be there in those posts. So true uh, debunk and mostly true are generally true in, uh, true facts, which could have some details could, which could be inaccurate, but they are generally uh, true and reliable. Whereas mixture has significant elements of truth and falsehood and especially could contain missing or misleading contexts and mostly false or conspiratorial and false or unproven information can also be highly misleading. So those would be considered more as misinformation. To verify whether this uh, 
labeling scheme would be effective at uh, for human labelers to annotate. We um, we had to speak uh, to uh, annotators, evaluate uh, a subset of the posts, and we see that you can achieve a high uh, level of uh, of the inter annotator agreement if we are labeling the social media posts based on their factualness and based on what the tweet or the post is trying to claim or say and how factual that claim is. And we also found that it's important to give examples for each category because which especially which are related to the domain to the annotators so that they have a more clear sense of uh, the type of annotation because they can be pretty subjective in some cases. So just to give a sense of the data set that we're dealing with, we collected tweets uh, using the Twitter API on COVID-19 vaccines, and there were 490K users with 9 million tweets. And from that, we extracted the weekly connected components in the engagement graph, which is basically the retweets or the replies or quotes, so that we get the source tweet or the content that it's promoting, as well as the user responses or engagements. And each of these uh, tweets, uh, source tweets with their engagements would be called one uh, information cascade on the network. So we had uh, 10,000 reliable cascades, which were uh, weekly labeled as reliable based on the news source, whereas the unreliable conspiracy were about 4K. So this could, if we managed to label these more accurately, we could actually have quite a large scale data set to train these more complex models to do detection for misinformation. So our proposed model to refine these uh, initial weak labels is based on using model guided label refinement. And we uh, rely on any generic misinformation detection model to model the instance credibility or the content credibility. And we can use different filtering criteria, but here we use entropy in the model predictions to see if the model is confident or not confident about, about its predictions. So a high entropy prediction is likely um, more confusing to the model and should be flagged for relabeling or for refinement in the labels. Uh, we also decided that uh, we should model the social context because the user credibility or the stance of the user with respect to a particular discourse uh, can be captured through the community of the user that they are part of. And a lot of the misinformed or uh, informed users tend to be separated in their own communities in the retweet structure. So we run Lovain community detection to obtain the community structuring of the users. And uh, communities with less credible or more misinformed users are ones that are more likely to share news, uh, the news sources with unreliable or conspiracy links. Based on that, we use the signals from both of these uh, modules to detect which instances should be either given, like either flipped in their label or retained with their initial weak label or sent to a human annotator to fix its label if required. And because the detection model would uh, is binarized because the input we ha uh, have is the initial weak label, which could be reliable, unreliable, or conspiracy, and the uh, we binarize the final expected label based on these two segregations. And the human annotator uh, is based, the human annotations are based on the fine grained classification. So for the subset that are sent for query, we do get these finer grained distinctions, but the model itself is binarized over these, uh, the colors that are shown on the slide. So for evaluation, we wanted to see whether uh, we can, we don't have the labels, the actual ground truth labels for all of the 14,000 cascades that we had or the social media posts that we had. So we use as a proxy uh, the misinformation detection accuracy from the model itself, the label correction accuracy on a validation set and the resource efficiency, which is basically the fraction of unwanted or wasted queries that are sent to human annotators. Uh, given the initial label. So we found that uh, with using just the, uh, the initial week labels, we had a uh, uh, average precision of 0.72, whereas if we refine it with just the entropy signal from the misinformation detection model, we could improve the 
misinformation detection performance on the validation or test set. Uh, whereas if we do include the social context only, again, we get an improvement over the weak labels, but the combination of the two along with the label flipping from the model's uh, confidence can actually boost the accuracy a lot more than the uh, previous methods. And we also evaluated on the validation and test set the, uh, the improvement over the noise recall in those initial weak labels. And we see that using both the, uh, the social context as well as the detection model could actually result in a 84% recall of the noise from the labels. And it also has a, a reasonable precision and fewer, uh, un, uh, fewer wasted queries. And just some open questions in the end. Uh, we have, we see that the probabilities from the detection model are correlated with these uh, finer grain distinctions. But one thing is that we still get a binary classification in the end from the model. And for the few labeled examples we, which were sent for human annotator, uh, annotator labels, we have this finer grain distinction. So we could use some semi-supervised learning classifiers to actually um, get these distinctions on the constructed data set. Uh, however, because the, the sparsity of labels in each category can be small, the F1 for each of these categories could be small. For true, because it's the largest class, it does have a higher F1. But for other classes where, they are, where there are lesser labels, uh, the F1 could yeah, just a little bit. So I think I was talking about like open research questions that are still there to be answered with respect to how do we construct these large scale data sets. And just I wanted to conclude by saying that we can label social media posts by their factualness, but still it's a hard problem to capture the nuanced distortion in those claims. And um, how do we get those nuanced classifications beyond the binary classification with these detection model and social context modeling, which do provide complementary information could be something interesting for uh, future open questions. And also we want to minimize resource utilization so that we can do it in a timely and scalable way, especially for the new and evolving domains like from pandemics, we move to vaccine misinformation and so on. So if anyone has any questions, we have the data set at the GitHub link and also my email here. So you can ask me now or afterwards offline too.